All right, it's uh, almost 9.20 in the morning on uh, chilly November the 7th, and I'm going to install the Thermobob on the bike. And I can tell you, I'm not looking forward to taking all the fairings off and all that. I almost wish I could just yell at the parts and make them jump into the bike, because I've had these fairings off and back on again so many times, it just gets to be a little old. But anyway, there's the bike waiting for the parts. And uh, over here we have the Thermobob. And here's the, there's where it all, all happens right there, I suppose. And then there's the extra line, and there's the fitting uh, that goes into the return to the water pump and some clamps and such. And I've got uh, some Honda HP coolant to put in the bike when, it, uh, when I do refill it, and I can remove it. Uh, on the good side, I'm not removing the fairings just for one purpose. I'm actually working, I've got a clutch cable, brand new clutch cable laying on the floor because currently my clutch cable is, hits down to like one strand of cable remaining. I rode it all the way across town the other day once I discovered that the clutch cable was coming apart. I've also got brake pads to replace and I've got an oil change to do. Of course, those don't require taking out the... Um, taking off the fairings, but uh, I'm going to do it while I'm doing everything else. And I've got, of course, anytime I work on the bike, I don't know about you guys, but I've always got the, the laptop computer available for the uh, ninja250.org uh, FAQs. Just about every question you might have as far as maintenance, you know, changing the oil, changing the coolant, uh, removing the fairings, putting them back on, any kind of questions you have, you'll run into, the, they, they've got an FAQ for it. And then, of course, I don't know if I look at these that often. I got the maintenance manuals out. I don't look at them that often, but uh, I don't look at them that often. But I sort of keep them around, almost like good luck charms. Uh, occasionally, there's some sort of uh, specification or a measurement or something that I, I want to get out of them. But anyway, there you are. Time to dig into the bike. All right. At this point, I've got the seat. I've got the side fairings off. I've got the fuel tank off. And I'm going to try to stop there because I really, I really don't want to take off the upper fairing. I might take off the lower fairing. That's that's easy enough. But the upper fairing is such a pain. I I've looked at it and I think I might be able to work around and inside the fairing. Uh, there's the return line for the uh, few, the uh, coolant. And up here, there might be enough room to work with my hands in there. I've already slipped the thermobob in and out of the uh, area above the bike's uh, cam, shaft, cam uh, cover. And it looks like it might be doable. All right, so there's the bottom fairing off. I think this pretty much makes the sites that you're going to have to work on to install the thermobob, you know, as available as they really need to be. And uh, so I'm going to work from here. And here are the two areas I'll be working today with the thermobob here in the uh, maintenance manual. There is the exploded view of the thermostat. And that piece of tubing right there that comes out and makes that uh, 90 degree turn to the right, that's the area that the thermobob is plumbed into. And then down across the engine coming out of the radiator there, that uh, piece of tubing that comes out and makes a 90 degree turn and goes straight down. That's where the bypass line from the thermobob plums back into the cooling system and there's the housing for the water pump right there. It plums into that. Over on the other page next door, uh, Bill was asking me to look at the amount of coolant that comes out of the engine. Well, according to the book here, it says that I should get one liter, and that's the reserve tank at uh, full level, including the radiator and the engine. So we'll see what comes out of it. Oh, that was messy. All right, the second bolt you have to remove is on the engine block back behind the headers just above the oil return line and there it is
Uh, that's a pretty good bit ex pretty good bit left in there uh, even after opening up the water pump drain so there it is and finally the overflow reservoir the coolant in the bike is actually relatively new it's only about a year and a half old I've done this before of course without having to film it which apparently makes it more difficult All right, I guess I should mention that uh, for those of you who are actual owners of uh, EX250s, I guess you're seeing things you're not used to seeing on this bike, and I should mention that this bike is a project bike that I used, installed a uh, fuel injection on. So you're going to see a few things while I'm changing the uh, coolant and installing the thermo bob. You're going to see things that I guess aren't usually on a normal uh, EX250. Uh, Next to the re reservoir there, there's a, an extra bus panel for the, fuel, for the fuel injection power. And when I'm installing the thermobob, it will be installed right above the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor for the fuel injection system that's, of course, not on a regular EX250. So anything you see here that looks a little odd, it's just simply part of the fuel injection system. All right, at this point, I've got the coolant out. I've taken off the two hoses that I'll be modifying with the thermobob. There's the upper hose that comes out of the orig bike's original thermostat and goes into the top of the radiator. And there's a thermobob which will be placed in there. I think it actually goes like that. So from the original thermostat into the thermobob, out of the thermobob, and up to the radiator. And then the other hose, of course, is the return from the radiator. And according to the instructions, the thermobob's return is plumbed in somewhere right in the, in the uh, turn. And obviously, I don't have a whole lot of room on mine because it's already been modified for the thermostat that, uh, for the uh, temperature sensor that feeds the information back to the fuel injection uh, computer. All right, so now my next step will be to remove the original thermostat, which is right down in there, there it is. Got to take that baby out and take the uh, take the thermostat out of it. All right, so now here added to the group is the old thermostat. Of course, it'll stay in the system, but without its uh, without its uh, thermostat inside of it. I'll take that out here in a moment. All right, so here's the original thermostat housing taken apart. Popped right out. Just a little bit crusty with, uh, I don't know, the stuff that builds up inside cooling systems. Maybe I'll clean that off before I put it back together. So now the next thing I'll do is get medieval on this thing. I'm going to cut it so that I can remove the thermostat from the housing because the housing, the, the circular flange around the outside, has to be put back into the casing of the original thermostat housing along with of course the the uh, the washer that makes it waterproof so it won't leak on me so I'm gonna tear this thing apart alright that only took a couple of moments what I'm left with the part that's gonna go back in looks just like this all the other parts are gonna go in the garbage or who knows where the actual reactor and the thermostat, the spring that loads it, and the bottom of the housing cage are all gone. Now the parts we're going to keep, of course, that part of the housing for the thermostat itself and the washer that goes with it and the outside pieces are all going to go back together with a little blue Loctite. Uh, I don't know if you've dealt with the EX250 before, but boy, with the high RPMs of this engine, the vibrations, every nut and bolt on this bike tries to come, tries to back out from the uh, engine mounts on down to the fairing bolts. Everything tries to loosen up and come off on this bike. So I am a great believer in blue Loctite. Okay, it took a lot of trial and error, uh, but this is the configuration that's going to fit on my motorcycle. Right? Now I think that. I think that there's going to be some variation uh, in other people's insulations. Now, mine, of course, is different, I think, from other people's because uh, mainly because it's got, I have the fuel injection uh, coolant temperature sensor right there. But uh, I'm about to 
finally install this and then I'll move on with the uh, the rest of the thermobob and the reroute line the bypass line all right here it is installed on the bike you can see the the pipe comes up from the water pump around the corner up into my temperature sensor housing and then around a little bit of the corner and there's the bypass and then around a little more of the corner and into the radiator. All right, here's the thermobob itself with the lines plumbed onto it, ready to be installed. The short line on the left hand side comes from the old thermostat into the thermobob and then through the longer line here to the radiator. The small line, of course, is the bypass that will connect into uh, the bypass fitting that I installed earlier. All right, so at this point, the thermobob is in. It's installed, it's connected between the radiator right there, the inflow to the radiator, and uh, there's the thermobob as we go down, and of course there's the outflow from the engine. So outflow from the engine up to the old thermostat, which is simply an empty shell now, which uh, still houses the, the uh, engines, uh, the temperature sensor that displays on the bike's instrument panel. And then, of course, there is the bottom of the thermobob. You can see the bypass line coming down out of the back of it. And uh, as far as getting it in this space right here, it does fit, but only uh, just barely. And it, uh, getting it in there, there's probably only one really good way of getting it in there. Uh, you put the original thermostat back in, but you don't tighten the bolts that hold it to the frame. Then you put in the thermobob. Uh, onto it and tighten up the uh, the brackets on that and then you put on the last bit of tubing which takes it to the radiator and that is the only way that I found that the whole thing will fit in there but it does it does fit now I'm going to move on to the bypass line that'll be the last step before I refill the system and crank it up to see how it uh, how it holds alright here we are back around on the left hand side of the bike to attach the bypass from the thermobob back into the return to the water pump line. And uh, Bill, I don't know if you remember what the length of tubing you sent me for this was, but as you can see, it's just about that much too long. And I'm, that's where I'll trim it right there. All right, now there is the bypass line connected right up. And that's the end of it. Uh, at this point, the thermobob is installed. Uh, I noticed that you can see it pretty well if we look up underneath the frame rails here there it is right there you can even read the name on it all connected up that's a view from the left hand side of the bike you can see I used a little bit of a the the thermobob in my in, in my uh, version of installing it here it is going to bump against the frame so I put a piece of rubber between the frame and the thermobob just to keep it from rattling, possibly. When I finished draining the fluid uh, into the catch pan here, I Bill wanted me to find out how much actually comes out of the bike as opposed to what the maintenance manual says. So I was very careful as I poured it off into the measuring cup here, then into the uh, old milk carton here to uh, get rid of it uh, back to the recycling place. But I was kind of surprised. In the end, you're seeing 1.4 liters. That's how much came out of the uh, EX250. Uh, 1.4 liters. So now I've got my uh, Honda HP coolant here. It's a 50-50 mix. It's the same green color that come that came out of the uh, EX250 from the um, the factory. In fact, it's who knows? It's probably the same stuff that Kawasaki uses. But anyway, each one of these things is just under a liter. So uh, one and a half of these just about ought to go into the bike when I refill it. All right, well, I started this whole thing today at uh, about 9.20 in the morning, and now it's uh, just past 4, and uh, everything that went on today included some, you know, helping out with kids and a little bit of lunch break and a little bit of honeydew stuff and getting back to the motorcycle you know off and on 
and uh, it didn't. It wasn't that bad a project. I finished it up, filled it up with coolant, ran it around the block a few times, and nothing leaks. Everything seems to be great. I, I'm going to ride it tomorrow to go to a doctor's appointment. Uh, it, it just as advertised, the higher temperature thermostat runs it a little bit warmer, which is fine with me. And nowhere near even, it actually was like but still below halfway up the, the uh, temperature range on the gauge on the bike. Um, and for Bill, uh, from the bypass tubing that you gave me with the kit, I cut 1.4, uh, an inch and a quarter was all I had to remove. From the uh, from it from the thermobob to the bypass fitting. Oh, and now here's my here's the mystery part of the day. Uh, the the small fat O-ring. Okay, that uh, apparently is something you need for your KLR and KLX uh, kits, but not for the not for the 250. And uh, I didn't use the the zip tie. I have my own here that are a little more rugged. Uh, I like them that don't don't even think about breaking ever. So anyway, uh, that's in that's into that project. It was uh, it was good, and I think it's going to work out nice for the bike.